ladies and gentlemen let's move on to our next panel discussion uh, with our next moderator uh, please give a warm round of applause for mr sogat chatterjee uh, mr chatterjee is a mentor at niti ayog co-founder of ave ventures and ex ceo of apollo hospitals preventive health mr chatterjee is also a c suite leader startup mentor academic advisor keynote speaker and a humanitarian for over two decades and counting mr chatterjee has been driving profitability top line growth and revitalizing businesses across healthcare fmcg otc pharma telecom and fmcd mr chatterjee will be moderating the panel on the topic of future of healthcare through metaverse mr chatterjee we welcome you to crypto world conference and look forward to this special discussion thank you anubhav thanks for the warm welcome uh good evening Uh, to all, and I welcome all of you to this first edition of Crypto World Conference 2022 by World Crypto Forum, and it has been brought to you by Aman Solutions and hosted on the Aman's Vortex platform. So, uh, we had some very engaging and very exciting uh, discussions uh, through the past uh, few hours uh, on on various topics and subjects. But then, uh, now we have come to a very interesting portion of this conference. and this is a session where we are going to talk about actually our existential future yes uh, we all can see that tomorrow happily only will we are living our today healthily so as we've been rightly put across let's start our session on the future of healthcare through metaverse but then before i proceed i would like to include and introduce my fellow panelists my co-panelists for this interesting session and this panelist have been also chosen very carefully keeping in mind the the thesis degree view of the pillars of the future of healthcare for example research design and delivery uh and that's how the 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 sequencing is so firstly i would like to welcome uh, mr sarvanand vivekanandan mr sarvanand vivekanandan is the co-founder and ceo of idea rx he has about 20 plus years of experience across different geographies both in india and abroad in asia europe us is a is a great source of inspiration to to his company and to all his fellow colleagues whom he has been influencing to do wonders in the world of entrepreneurship he has been working in various domains such as healthcare supply chain automobile manufacturing and product designing strategy advising and operations uh, and i am amdabad alumnus Selvan has a solid foundation in management technology, which are very well polished during his stints in various companies in the past, like Tech Mahindra, Volvo, uh, and the likes. He has launched multiple startups, led them from the front, raised funds from them, and also gave them very successful M&A exits. Uh, as an individual, he never gets bored to emphasize that the ethical business is the best business practice. The way to win a deal is to design it as a win-win deal. and every prospect has a potential to be your customer for the next 50 years and no need to look for short term gains a firm believer of sharing is multiplying and is always open to be the best man for the business so welcome sarvanand welcome on the show thank you shogun thank you uh with the second round of applause i would also like to welcome dr archiman mahapatra uh somebody who i have known uh known uh, personally also he is an epidemiologist and, and a public health speaker dr mohapatra expertizes in designing and conducting multi state epidemiological and public health research projects using multi partner networks he has a very extensive rich experience of working in the focus research and policy translations for example in drafting of the government's covid-19 sops and ps have been guidelines is also working on the national research priority setting exercise dr mohapatra has been a part of the esteemed organizations like international clinical epidemiology network institute of liver and bioengineering sciences save the children and he is a much awarded and uh, and rewarded research and academic assignments when he was in there in india and abroad and also he is a philanthropic engagements with ngos for his community services and have been uh, at the help of experience of training students from health management social and science disciplines and he completed his management mbbs from the scb medical college and also from uh, his md in from banaras indian university and he also has done his management from iim so welcome uh, welcome dr mahapatra and good to have you on, on on the show thank you for having me and with this uh, from the delivery point i would now like to welcome mr saptajit mitra 
Satyajit, uh, he is uh, uh, brings with himself a load uh, of years of experience, 25, 28 years in preventive health, pharmaceutical and healthcare operations across sales, management and both global and Indian companies like Eli Lilly, Baxter, Alcon and presently he is heading the operations in Apollo. Uh, he has expertise in hospital operations, marketing, sales, management, business strategies, and new product launches. Uh, Satyajit has successfully led a three-member team even from behest of Apollo to China for a detailed study on the preventive healthcare market much before it was actually uh, the thing in India. So he has been studying the market very closely and uh, and, and he has been a multi-awarded winner uh, and rewarded person also during his career stint. He also was instrumental in making Apollo win the India's Best Health and Wellness Summit Award uh, in the Preventive Health category in 2018. With a with a mind of a mentor and a and a motivating leader, and a deep understanding of mental well-being, so we welcome Satyajit also on this panel. So, thank, thank you, you so thank much you all for your for your time, gentlemen. Uh, you see, the idea of metaverse uh, it means an ever-growing share of our lives, labor, leisure, time, wealth, happiness, relationships. And that will be spent inside virtual worlds rather than just aided through digital devices. It will be a parallel plane for the existence that, you know, sits on the top of our digital and physical emotions, you know, and unites both in a way. Now, by adopting the above, what we foresee that the metaverse holds tremendous potential to unilaterally transform healthcare by combining these emerging technologies of AI, AR, VR, and cloud and edge, you know. And some of the ways in which the metaverse could revolutionize healthcare, at least the way I see it, is in terms of skill development, education, training, health and nutrition, mental health, teleconsultations, remote patient management, collaborative surgeries, you know, and much more and much more. So, so let's kind of open up the discussions. And uh, I would like to start by asking Sarban, probably, you know, if you can help us throw some light on this, you know. So. Seven, so from your perspective point of view, at that you have been using technology as a key uh, force in, in your businesses and you always uh, emphasize the use of technology in healthcare. So what technology trends do you see will increase the adoption of metaverse in healthcare? Okay, so that's an interesting aspect of Shaugat that uh, we need to understand. What started a couple of years as a wishful thinking are, you know, the uh side projects in our different companies you know the metaverse is at the verge of a mass adoption and primarily i see a couple of uh trends or uh, facts which is uh pushing it ahead right so apart from the covid uh, uh pandemic induced a necessity for uh, uh digital uh delivery of uh, healthcare on the technology front a couple of things are happening so if you look at any technology, the uh, moment of yeah, inflection comes when, you know, three or four factors start uh, working out uh, positively. So I mean, the first factor is going to be the cost and the availability of the uh, technology for the end user. Absolutely. It can be in terms of the hardware, software, or the uh, connectivity, et cetera. And then what kind of user experience and business value proportion it provides. So the moment it reaches a significant value for the end user or the business, definitely there is going to be an uptick of the level of interest in terms of in, uh, uh, investment, in terms of what output is going to happen. And also this has to be heavily surrounded by, supported by the development in terms of what kind of infrastructure the chemist is needed and how much it is available. And now with different heterogeneous systems available in terms of hardware and uh, uh, software, the interoperability of that particular technology also has to get into at least a hygiene level so that it can go for a massive adoption. And as far as metaverse is concerned, some of the key trends which I see in the last couple of years is very, very encouraging. So to start with, if you look at the clarity and the depth of user experience, there is a very positive uh, development, both in terms of the hardware uh, efficiency as well as the software for example google now has uh, introduced the geospatial uh, future so that no more a person or the user doesn't even need to have to check into specific uh, locations you know 
consume the service now even the developers are going out with providing a five sense based user experience right right from touch to feel to seeing to hearing uh, to suppose for example apple ear has come up with a spatial studio which enables to uh, utilize uh, sound uh, sources from multiple uh, sources so that is giving a very great in depth experience for the end user and apart from that if you look at uh, hardware uh, developments we are getting uh, advanced lens filters etc all these things put together there is a very good user experience okay and then if you look at the cost of it apart from the uh, reduction in cost so in terms of the hardware right so typically the medical iot devices are going to play a very vital role in that say for example uh, wearable blood pressure monitors ecg monitors etc the cost has significantly come down in the past couple of uh, years and apart from that even we see nowadays like you know many companies who provide the blockchain as a service facility itself because usually that used to take a big chunk of the development cost involved in you know developing and deploying uh, er uh, environment so those kind of supporting infrastructure is also coming up now and again if you look at web ar uh, you know it has completely eliminated even the need for any kind of mobile devices itself and if you look at interoperability we have now you know cross platform eas etc it is supporting interoperability as well as it's also bring down the cost of development of that so now when we look at a combination of the cost of development from the software aspect as well as the cost of hardware which is needed has come down significantly and that definitely is going to have a good impact on the um, uh, user uh, adoption okay so yeah so this is definitely going to be a bigger impact uh, in terms of availability and accessibility of the healthcare totally totally agree with you sir brother in fact you know um, to the to the various uh, strata and the informations which you have shared uh, not only this uh, this stand at a stage of uh, uh, which i would say revolutionary but at the same point of time uh, the adoptability uh, is also a very key key point you know and that that actually leads me to the to the next phase and uh, you know nobody better than dr dr mahapatra to kind of give a deep dive into that uh, because based on your deep research and research based healthcare expertise uh, you know once we have done uh, one one stake has solved the purpose you know uh, how do you think would a patient doctor relationship in in real terms evolve around in healthcare that's a uh, complicated question i would not say complex it's a complicated question actually because patient doctor relationship has been a hot topic we see that uh, uh, there has been uh, displeasures around it in fact medical litigations they have gone up uh, at the same time i must say that practice of medicine is a social uh, dimension so it's a altogether new civilization coming up on the uh, metaverse and uh, where increased globalization will be experienced people will be able to access perhaps may be able to access uh either to not available uh, uh, services so their expectations may be retitled recalibrated and recalibrated uh so uh, and also also the digital footprinting that would happen around it and building your own databases and uh, a call for decentralization with web 3.0 coming up patient would ask for further access to that data and interoperability so interesting times coming up there uh, at the same time i am also a bit concerned because whenever technology comes up we always see that technology is an equalizer uh, and the practice of medicine and healthcare is uh, all about inequities and vulnerabilities uh, could it also mean that if technology is readily available a, a particular segment of the society is able to access the technology while the vulnerable segment is still left behind uh people who are able to access and that's what we see usually whenever you improve suppose we look at government hospitals you improve the services there then the most powerful segment ends up availing care there so there is a shift of the elite or the rich from the private sector to the now well functioning government sector it's very difficult to get a bed in a government good government hospital in a developing world country so those those uh, sudden improvements actually lead to an accentuation of inequities before things settle down 
and metaverse and healthcare within metaverse is a new concept that is coming up i foresee that immediate in the immediate times there will be a lot of irritation or other displeasure because things are forming up more litigations may come up data privacy issues may come up uh, but that will gradually like anything starts with a chaos with a bang so things will settle down in due course uh, uh, i'm a bit uh, also concerned that uh, we call for sustainable development goals eradication of elimination of extreme poverty survival of pregnant women children when we are talking of those kind of vulnerabilities will the metaverse re- actually serve to solve real world problems or they are just like uh, 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 giving better services to someone who already has uh, access to these services uh, so those are debatable topics i think we'll explore uh, more of these aspects as we discuss i'm sure i mean what you what you said you know is normally uh, why do you say it's a complicated question but then kind of you really have simplified that that's one and two you left uh, you know with a very hard hitting social impact uh, a question which actually we need to address during the later course of our discussions so you know now as so we have we have touched two two sides uh, with sir vanan we have touched upon the design part uh, one of the key elements of healthcare with you we have touched upon the the research part you know which leads to the design and now uh, i i come to satyajit and uh, to understand the delivery part because that's where the action is happening right so so satyajit Uh, you being at the helm of operations of, of Apollo, and you have seen this industry up close and personal, you know. and uh, from the from the delivery and the interaction level of the patient, along with the hospital and the healthcare entities. So, how accessible do you think, uh, as you know, uh, Dr. Mahapatra just spoke about uh, the poverty levels, the below poverty levels, the social impact, the reach? And as Sir Vernon spoke about how dynamic and how the cost impact of it could happen, so that's both are actually interconnected, the reach and the cost. So, how, from your point of view, do you think metaverse accessible metaverse will be for the patients, and how uh, cost effective it will be? Yeah, I mean, uh, the cost is X. We don't know what the cost would be, so just kind of hypothetically speaking. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Sir, for bringing that up, and I think it's a very Very pertinent question, particularly when we are in a country like India. The first thing that comes for implementation of any technology, anything that we want to do, the first question comes is how much accessible it is and how cost effective it is, and this is what we have to deal with. And uh, let me say, I think uh, going a little back, two years back, and uh, it's all fresh in our memories how COVID came up and how India fought COVID. Uh, in a very effective way, much probably better in, than most developed countries who had all sort of money and technology. But uh, India has its own way of coming up with cost-effective solutions, and that's how we dealt with COVID. And we have all seen it, uh, and we can very proudly say that we we were the uh, one of the countries who were the largest supplier of vaccines across the world that saved so many lives. So. coming back to metaverse to say, I, we we started developing at the last <laughs> absolutely so 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 coming to metaverse again i see our country as one of those who are at the leading front in terms of technology in terms of software development and we are the leaders when it comes to companies which are leading worldwide uh, i don't want to name one or two companies there are a huge number of companies india is also now becoming a startup hub there are so many startups working on it uh, so the point that which uh, mr sarvaran and dr archisman were highlighting is that uh, the same thing is that how accessible it will be to the common man what dr archisman was saying that uh, to the government hospital so as of now if you ask me metaverse is a is, is a little distant because the vr is uh, not uh, so uh, so cheap uh, as compared to headsets when it comes to virtual reality augmented reality the uh, service provider whether it is the hospitals or the government has to invest a lot of money and then this technology will be available in the beginning in the initial stage it will be at more of an experimental pilot stage with major cities or major hospitals but if you ask me today what will happen to the tier 2 or tier 3 cities It, it's much far away 
it's not going to be so easily accessible. Uh, and I'm telling you some of the ground realities when we look at it. it. It all looks good. But yes, with the ground reality, we are still a bit far away. But the positive side of it is that we as a country have a lot of technology advancement happening. And I'm sure we will come up with some cost-effective solutions, some much lower versions or, or lower uh, cost-effective models to drive uh, the technology that is currently available. And uh, we are also at, uh, at Apollo Hospitals, we are the leaders, if I may say, in telemedicine. So already a lot of robotic surgeries, a lot of uh, distant uh, consultations are already happening. So yes, we are there. But if you ask at the larger scale, we are still much away. Very true, very true, Satish. And this is something which is like uh, thought provoking. And, you know, uh, but one thing for sure, I mean, as a country, uh, India with a 1.4 billion population, not only we, anybody globally also looks as to us as, as a consumer market. The strength of the any, any, any uh, foreign entity being able to grow in this country is just because of the hugeness of our consumer. And that's how the translation happens. And then the same applies here also as well. And I would like to kind of keep uh, uh, leading this, this discussion a bit more, uh, stretching this a bit more, because one thing for sure, uh, unless, you know, uh, just like uh, Albert Einstein said once of a different note, that unless you have been able to uh, explain simply, you have un not understood it well enough, right? So similarly, in such cases, unless you have been able to make a solution uh, socially impactful for the underprivileged, right, then you have not made a solution, actually. It's just kind of a, just like Satyajit said, it, it stays in some kind of healthcare chain blocks and it never moves out and only the privileged ones would get access to it. But then that does not improve the country or the denominator as such. So with this, Sarvaran, uh, let me come back to you and kind of uh, put up this question in a slightly different way. Uh, how do you think that uh, Metaverse can positively impact the accessibility of healthcare to the underprivileged? Uh, that's, that's an interesting aspect. And I also completely agree with uh, the uh, view of uh, Satyajit, who said that Metaverse is definitely the way to go in future, but are we ready now? Is a question. But I definitely feel that this is going to have a big impact in terms of uh, inclusion of uh, uh, the rural population and the fringe, uh, you know, uh, community under the coverage of uh, effective uh, healthcare. And already the positive impact has uh, started happening. So how I see this is like now, if you look at it. So the first uh, aspect is availability of a particular uh, healthcare service, right? It can be a specialist or an access to doctor, etc. And a good uh, metric to uh, see is the population versus uh, specialist uh, ratio. For example, in Kenya, the availability of a doctor to a, a population is 1 is to 17,000 uh, people. While if we consider the same ratio in India, we are blessed with a uh, doctor for every 854 uh, people, you know, and, and this is for just the doctors. And if you look at uh, specialists like surgeons or diagnostic specialists, it's going to become far more uh, poor, right? And the next aspect which is going to have a big impact is accessibility of the available specialists. So this usually, you know, is uh, influenced by the geo spread of specialists versus a patient uh, spread. For example, in India, we have like around 70% of our population is a rural population, while the 74% 70 of the population being served by just 34% of the country's doctors. So you can clearly see that the uh, density of the doctors versus patient is very concentrated on the urban areas, while it's going to have an impact on the population of the rural areas. And the third aspect is always there, which is the cost effectiveness. Uh, because the more and more we talk about the rural population or the underprivileged, the cost is going to become a very big uh, issue here. And I definitely see that the first two factors can be positively influenced by effective adoption of metaverse. And it doesn't need to happen on 
um, at one go. Okay, uh, the simple version of metaverse can be adopted at every stage and it can uh, give a uh, good impact. Say, for example, upskilling of doctors and surgeons and even paramedical staff can have very big impact in terms of availability. Okay, sure. so we worked on a project in Kenya where uh, the, the mission was to have zero mortality for uh, pregnant women. As a part of it, the major activity which gave us a lot of results is more than anything was upskilling the paramedical staff who are spread across the uh, different counties which are on the outskirts of uh, the capital. So definitely, you know, even if the infrastructure is a little bit costly at this stage, the government was in a position to adopt telemedicine, this kind of training exercise using metaverse, it can be done for training people. So that you will have more number of specialists who are available in a country or in a rural area to treat the patient. So this is going to have a positive impact. And the next aspect what we talk about is accessibility. Okay. So even though governments have been trying to, you know, uh, ensure that the patient, uh, the world population is spread across by, you know, creating infrastructure in the rural and all, it's going to take a long time. It's easier said than done. In this case, how a metaverse, I see a big role for metaverses to integrate it in different uh, phases or in uh, different capacities with the existing telemedicine infrastructure. Okay. Uh, because, say, for example, Globet, which is the uh, number one uh, telemedicine uh, infrastructure provider, you know, they are uh, inculcating, I mean, incorporating uh, different aspects of the metaverse, you know, the holistic metaverse is taken into different places and is being integrated with that and that is going to help uh, to take the services of this specialist towards the rural area okay and when we talk about the cost effectiveness even the first two aspects like you know the availability of more number of uh, uh, treating specialists towards the population as well as the possibility of you know incorporating and providing these uh, services through telemedicine facility is going to have good impact on the affordability of such a service to the, by the population. True, true, sir. And in fact, uh, uh, both these dimensions are actually interlinked to each other, you know, and as you rightly mentioned, the the cost and training, and they both hold an equal importance. I mean, just primarily bringing down cost, uh, compromising the training is also a challenge and vice versa. And I think Metaverse can actually, uh, or probably the, the healthcare intervention using Metaverse probably can actually play a large balancing route. And in particular, if upscalement is, is actually done in the rural areas or in the tier two or the tier three, that will significantly impact upon the cost part also, which will drastically come down just purely just because of the accessibility part. And then the, then the, then the same can be explored at the given position. So, uh, you know, uh, but then Dr. Dr. Mahapatra, given that, uh, as we have spoken so far, that we are, we are talking about uh, such a huge population of our country like India of 1.4 billion, right? And we definitely need more skilled manpower, no two ways about it. We agree, solemnly agree. And we know how significant a role Metaverse can play in that, as the servant has said. So, and that brings me to understand from you your views on how metaverse can actually help healthcare services provide training and how do we adapt our learnings of public health and healthcare systems to this metaverse? Right. So, uh, yeah, as uh, Mr. Sarvanan was already uh, has already pointed out, it can help in rapid scaling up uh, of training uh, interventions. Uh, that that levels up the ground a bit. Uh, but uh, what I see is it is also an empowering tool from the patient side. So it's not just one side of training that needs to go in. It's also about educating the patient and generating demand. Uh, I see that Metaverse uh, has a bigger role to play there. A bit of regulation also to happen in terms of data protection and privacy. And uh, uh, But should also enable people to have second consultations, third consultations or share their uh, reports across geographical uh, boundaries, consult remotely. Those aspects uh, uh, are trainable skills. Skill transfer, see, in a country like India, you will never be able to match up the healthcare demand 
by upskilling your uh, hr or by recruiting more and more hr it has to like skill has to be transferred to the people people must learn how to take care of their general needs not to fall sick and if they fall sick what could be the primary level of intervention that could work where there is no doctor right so that kind of training that kind of standardization could happen with metaverse intervention i'll stop there i think we are running bit up bit late of time over to you no i mean so you, you just stopped at that that juncture incidentally that's where probably satyajit needs to pick up and find give a final view so satyajit just i'm you know, talking from the preventive health that's where dr mahapath has stopped of taking care of yourself so uh, from a preventive health perspective what do you see the future of the metaverse i mean is preventive health a impactful part of the metaverse yes yeah, so but i think uh, it's uh, first of all it is very important that we uh, are uh, able to bring some amount of consciousness and again the sad reality is that in the last two years people became a little more conscious about uh prevention uh, rather than treatment because and also they got scared so they said that okay let me go and get my health checkup done because uh if i am not at a good health status probably uh, i may end up uh, with a higher risk of getting the covid uh, and not getting treated so that awareness came thankfully uh, but uh, how do we leverage metaverse in the preventive uh, health segment yes in that uh, just to so just look at it if if we can explain to a patient or to a customer how his heart really looks like when there is a blockage so that 3d vision that that augmented reality the virtual reality how how does the how does it gut function if all is a person is able to see we are able to increase the awareness level to a very different level so if the the future could be and and that is how metaverse and augmented reality etc ai started with gaming and that is where we have to gamify the healthcare we have to gamify things and make it interesting uh, not only for Uh, the people who are in their mid middle age but also for the younger generation so because younger generation we have to look forward when it comes to prevention we have to save the future so we have to look forward to really save our kids and make them more healthy so for that they will just fall for it when it comes as a vr as a gamified mode and there a lot of what already dr mohapatra and mr savana said that we have to really make people aware how the things right. has to be and to make it uh, very very uh, interesting for people to become aware and that is awareness is the only thing probably which we need to do and in, and through we are through ar through ai we can make all this happen in a virtual world and, and that people can really take certain so certainly. that's what I thank you thank you thank you so much satyajit for this for your views and in fact you know it was quite a indeed an engaging discussion and i i thank you all for your time and your knowledge shared in this forum uh, though given the situation we could have gone for the entire day uh, probably on the next forum because this dimension is of such but i sincerely wish and i hope that we uh, actually all join hands together and we make a significant impact on healthcare uh, through metaverse and then we use this forum and not leave our thoughts only at the thought level but we collectively come together and address the situation and i think uh, this this forum can do wonders in helping put across our thoughts and plans into action in many ways and one so thank you thank you so all very much and i wish you all the very best of health and happiness and uh, over to you anubhav thanks thanks for thank you thank, you thank you thank you thank you much yadav ji uh thank you to all our panelists uh you know it to be fair to say that we are witnessing a gathering of an elite group of web 3.0 thought leaders today and we will all take back something important uh this has been a truly insightful uh, conversation that i have also myself uh, enjoyed listening to so thank you once again to all of you and you have a great rest of the evening